Hello everyone, my name is David Gochran and I am back with another video to help you sell more books. Today we're going to look at the topic of reviews and how to get more of them, various myths surrounding them, and not just reviews on Amazon but other retailers too, but we're going to specifically look at some of the benefits uh, to having lots of good reviews on Amazon itself. Um, we're also going to look at things like the whole topic of paid reviews. Uh, because people seem to think that all paid reviews are not allowed, but some are. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's a good idea. We're going to look at some of the companies and the business practices around that. And we're also going to look at Amazon's rules surrounding reviews because some authors have actually been banned for review ab abuse. So we're going to just, just look into that side of things just a little bit just to make sure that you stay on the right side of the line because I definitely don't want you to get banned on Amazon. And there's lots of things which are totally legitimate with no ethical concerns that you can do to increase the amount of reviews on your book. And we'll dive into why that's important and a little bit of reader psychology too. Okay, let's do this. Now, just before I, I dive into the myths, first of all, make sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell too. And also check out the, the description below the video because with every video that I post, I always make sure there's a lot of companion resources. So if you wanna dive into any aspect of this topic in any more detail, there's gonna be lots of links down there for you. Okay, so let's dive right in and look at those myths specifically because there's two primary myths around reviews, and if you watch my other videos, you'll have heard me mention these. So I'll only go into them briefly, but I will put links in the description if you want to dive into this particular aspect of the topic in any more detail. Um, the, first, the first myth we can squash straight away because, you know, um, it's pretty obvious that reviews don't influence sales rank, and I don't even know, you know, how that review got started. Um, you can measure that yourself very, very easily. Um, but, you know, I've been looking into the Amazon algorithms and specifically what drives sales rank for years. And there is absolutely no evidence whatsoever, let me be clear about that, no evidence whatsoever that reviews influence sales rank. And the other review um, is a bit more pervasive because it's harder to immediately disprove. And it's the kind of thing you can see, you know, if your sales aren't going well as an author, it's the kind of thing that you could start believing is true. Uh, and that is that something magical happens when you hit 50 reviews. Now there's all sorts of versions of this myth. Um, it usually says something along the lines of Amazon will start promoting your book once you hit 50 reviews, because that's a sign to Amazon that your book is worth promoting, I guess. Um, other people say 100 reviews, 200 reviews. There's been all sorts of versions over the years. I think this myth actually was started by a company that was selling reviews on Amazon. So it was trying to convince authors how important reviews are. So that's another reason not to believe it. But you know, you can actually test this yourself. Just find any book. Um, you know, and I know authors who have done this where they had 49 reviews and then some they, they waited for the next review to come in and they tracked their sales rank. Absolutely nothing happened. And and I again I can tell you, like I've been looking into this stuff for years and, and, and examining the algorithms and designing all sorts of tests and experiments to measure different parts of the recommendation engine on Amazon. And we actually have a pretty clear idea at this point what triggers Amazon recommending your book, like you know, the kind of things that will encourage Amazon to start emailing your book to lots of readers and recommending it and the kind of things that will trigger Amazon into recommending it in all the millions of different slots on the site where Amazon recommends books and I have never seen any evidence whatsoever that reviews play a part in that and um, that's not to say they don't have an influence that they don't play a, a different kind of role and we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute um, but these myths and um, the reason why I'm particularly worried about them and the reason why I, I repeat them is because they can lead authors to engage in practices that can get them in trouble on Amazon. We'll talk about the exact rules in a minute, um, but one thing you should also be wary of is, is buying a review. Now, there are legitimate services that Amazon actually permits. Because Amazon, while it doesn't allow you to pay for a review, it does permit you to pay for what's called an editorial review. Now, this is a review uh, in a magazine, maybe like Kirkus or Publishers Weekly or Forward Reviews. Um, which offer services to indie authors where they charge an incredible amount of money to review your book. Kirkus charges between $425 and $725, depending on the length of the review and how quickly you want it done. Um, and I can tell you right now, it, it's not even worth a fraction of the price. I know authors who've gone through this experience and gotten superb reviews from Kirkus, like a starred review, and it had little or no effect on their sales. So, so don't waste your money. Um, and really, if you think about it, like no readers read Kirkus. That brand means nothing to readers. They don't read Publishers Weekly either. Um, nobody reads these magazines. There's just a bunch of publishers who are subscribed to them and they 
and, and they just toss them in the corner of their office. Nobody really cares about the reviews in these books, except for a small circle of people in the traditional publishing industry. So unless you're aiming at that segment for whatever reason, when 99% of indie authors won't be, it is utterly pointless to, to spend this kind of money on a review. Um, it won't get you in trouble with Amazon, but it might get you in trouble with your bank manager. And there's, a, there's another good reason not to give companies like Kirkus any of your money. Um, they, they, how, do I, how do I say this without getting, getting into trouble with, with somebody's lawyer? Okay, they have a variety of unsavory business partnerships with companies like Author Solutions, which is a very predatory vanity press, who then resells a Kirkus review, which only which costs between $425 and $725, and they sell it to newbie authors for $3,000. And this kind of practice is completely indefensible. And the other companies I mentioned, like Publishers Weekly, engage in it too. So don't give them any of your money. If you really do want an editorial review, and they do have their uses, like I've gotten editorial reviews before. I didn't pay anything like that for them. Uh, I've never paid anything for them. Um, but they do have their uses. Like it is a professional reviewer often. And, you know, it is often a lengthy review and sometimes you can carve out some really juicy quotes to use in your marketing. Um, I got an editorial review from Reedsy Discovery. I think they charge $50. Um, I'll put a link in the comments so you can check out yourself. And um, now I didn't pay anything for it because I was part of the beta program when they were just ironing out the kinks. And it was a really great review. I have to say they paired me up with a reviewer who really got my book because this particular book they were reviewing is, is this really kind of marmite, my marmite book where people either love it or hate it. And this guy totally got what I was trying to do with the book. So I, I was pleased with that personally. Um, but actually the best review I ever got, the best editorial review I ever got on any of my books was from the Historical Novel Society because I, I write historical novels. And it didn't cost me anything. I just applied for a review during a, through a form on their site. I think I had to provide a couple of free copies of my book, maybe a paperback copy. So there was a tiny bit of cost and hassle there. Um, but it was such a positive experience. Not only did they review the book in their online magazine, um, the reviewer actually enjoyed the book so much that she independently decided to do a follow-up feature for the actual the print version of the magazine, diving into why I'd written you know certain scenes a certain way. And just as an author, that was just a really cool experience to have. And you know, didn't cost me anything except for a bit of hassle getting the review copy out to them. But the thing is, these editorial reviews, um, you shouldn't worry about them too much anyway, because they won't actually get reviews of your book on Amazon, which is what you want for a couple of reasons. Now, here's why reviews are actually important on Amazon. Not because they affect sales rank and not because they tickle the algorithms for you. And um, what they do do is sway on the fence purchasers. And by that, I mean a reader who has clicked through to your book page for whatever reason, maybe one of your ads, Maybe they saw your book in the also bots of another book on Amazon, whatever. And they click through to your page and they're not, you know, one of your super fans or whatever. You're not an auto buy for this person. You're new to them. So they're looking around your page, deciding whether to make a purchase or not. And reviews will be one of those factors and a pretty influential one in helping them make up their mind. And if you've lots of positive reviews, that will sway them towards a purchase. And if you've lots of negative reviews or very few reviews, obviously that won't act in your favor. Um, and aside from that, and that actually is the biggest role that reviews play in my opinion, Aside from that, um, I know for a fact that Amazon do use reviews as a metric, but not in the kind of algorithmic sense that, that people believe in that myth uh, assume. They use them in a more kind of hand-picked curatorial sense in, in that I know for a fact that when Amazon are selecting books for their on-site promotions, like for things like the Kindle Daily Deal, Kindle Monthly Deal, Prime Reading Promotions, things like that, Amazon will look at reviews as one of the factors in helping them decide which books to pick. And also Amazon's publishing imprints like 47 North and Montlake, um, they will actually look at reviews as part of the decision-making process in deciding which authors they want to approach to, to, to write for their, for their imprints. And, that, and that's about it. But I think you know, that, that role of um, influencing on-the-fence purchasers is so important that it's worth you know, spending a bit of time and energy putting a process in place that will gener generate reviews for you. And don't forget that these reviews will follow you around the Amazon site. So if you are you know, using Amazon ads as a, 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 as a platform, you, know, you will see when your Amazon ads are there that the reviews will, the review total and score will appear underneath. And same goes for when Amazon recommends your book, by the way, around the site, um, that review score will follow. So that's, that's another reason why it's important. Um, it's very important to be aware of the Amazon rules here so that you don't get in trouble. Because as I said, people have actually been banned from Amazon um, for abusing these. Now, those guys were abusing reviews on, a, on an industrial scale. Uh, 
but you can still get in trouble with Amazon and you don't, you don't want to do that. You never want to risk getting in, getting in trouble with Amazon when it's such a big chunk of your, your income. The, the rules are pretty easy to, to sum up. Um, no friends. So if you have a close personal relationship with somebody, um, they shouldn't be reviewing your book. Um, no payment, with the exception of those editorial reviews I was talking about. But for Amazon customer reviews, no payment can be made. You can't give them money. You can't give them payment in kind. You can't give them an Amazon gift card. You can't even give them book two of your book, you know, as an incentive to review book one. Um, I think some people might have done that in the past, but Amazon recently made it very explicit. You cannot do that. The only thing you can give people um, as some kind of, you know, compensation or incentive, whatever way you want to phrase it, the only thing you can give them is a copy of the book they're reviewing. Now, this causes confusion sometimes, so I want to be absolutely clear here. Uh, books have a special um, set of rules around reviews. Other products like phone chargers, whatever, you're not permitted to give them a free sample of the product uh, in exchange for a review. But because the practice of giving out um, advanced reader copies or ARCs, which we'll talk about in a minute, is so you know, long-standing and legitimate in the publishing industry, Amazon has actually carved out a specific exemption there. So you are permitted to give a free copy of your book to a reviewer in exchange for a review, an honest review. You're not allowed to ask for a positive review, a five-star review, a minimum four-star. You just have to ask for an honest review and that's it. And they don't have to be under any compulsion to review. They're also allowed not review if they don't want to. And you also can't engage in any review swaps. This is where one author says, I'll review your book if you re review mine. Um, it's the dumbest thing to do because Amazon's, Amazon has a series of review fraud bots which are patrolling the store looking for links like that. And they'll spot that in two seconds and you'll both get in trouble and you'll lose the review too. So it's really a bad idea. And also inactive customers um, are not permitted to review. This is another anti-fraud measure. Um, so I think the threshold is $50. Like someone has to have spent $50 on Amazon in the last 12 months to have review privileges. So if they haven't reached that threshold, um, they won't be able to review your book. Just so you know, in case, you know, sometimes it, it crops up that a review, a, a reader will email you and say, hey, I tried to review your book on Amazon and it wouldn't let me, I don't know what's up. And then you might freak out thinking that, you know, you've gotten in trouble with Amazon or something. You haven't, relax. 99% um, of the time, it's because that person hasn't spent enough money on Amazon to reach the threshold to be permitted to review. Okay, so how do you actually get reviews? Now that we know they are important, but maybe not for the reasons that you're assuming, but still important how do you actually get more reviews on your book and especially if we can't we don't want to pay people we can't pay people and we don't want to spend money on those editorial reviews and they don't usually copy them onto amazon anyway so how do we get more amazon customers to review our books and um, it's actually pretty simple we just ask for them now um, i might have mentioned this in another review or another video but when a reader finishes your book they're usually in a very positive frame of mind, at least, you know, uh, when they read my books because they're brilliant. No, but if you've done your job as a storyteller, um, the, reviewer, the reader will have a very positive opinion of you and that's a perfect time to ask them to review your book. Obviously, you will be asking them to do other things. You might be asking them to purchase book two, to sign up to your mailing list, whatever. But make sure you put in a line about reviews there. Now, this is something that I've been doing since I started self-publishing in 2011. I've always, at the back of my book, asked readers to review my book and I think you know a lot of authors do but you know there are different ways that you can do this and you could different ways that you can tweak this to massively improve the percentage of readers that will actually leave a review the first thing you need to do is to put in a clickable link now I didn't do this at the start when I started self-publishing and another author I think it was Deb Geary um, advised me to change it to a clickable link and my review rate tripled overnight like no exaggeration like I could see the impact straight away and it makes sense you know you make something easy for someone and they're more likely to do it especially online where we tend to be a bit more lethargic shall we say about completing tasks because of all the all the flashy distractions everywhere. Um, and I'll actually put a link in the comments to, um, I think it's a blog post by uh, Dave Chesson at Kindlepreneur, um, who taught me a trick about putting in a special review link, which actually takes people right to the review creation box on Amazon. So they don't, you know, just go to your product page and have to hunt around. And that's especially important if they're uh, reading your book on like an e-ink Kindle, which isn't great for browsing the web, as you might know. And when, and when they click your link to review your book, they're just on your books page on Amazon. And it can be tricky to find the actual review box but with this special link and I'll, I'll, I'll put a link in the comments so you know um, how to construct one for your own book 
And with this special link, it will just open up the review box on their Kindle itself and make it super easy for them to leave a review. So I strongly recommend doing that. And um, But aside from putting in the clickable link and making it kind of prominent after they finish your book, um, I also recommend spending a little bit of time on the copy there, just on the language and just making it enticing because, you know, again, I think, you know, authors can sometimes, you know, do this in a kind of eyes down fashion and just be, be confident and, and talk to them like they're people. You know, we sometimes forget that, you know, readers are people as well and we should just talk to them and just explain why it's important. Like, no need to go overboard. Like, sometimes I see authors writing like a 10 page letter begging for reviews. I think that comes across as far too desperate and you know most people won't even bother reading that but just a line or two and just stress how important it is to you say it would really mean a lot if you left a review to me or um, reviews are really important because they help readers discover books they like or something like that you know and I'm not, I'm not going to tell you exactly how to word it because the way you talk to your readers should be different to how I talk to my readers it should be different for everyone so try and try and do it in your own voice make it natural but just you know, remember to stress why it's important and the other thing that really actually helps you you know pump up that review percentage quite a lot and um, i think readers are sometimes intimidated intimidated about leaving reviews because they might have the you know a new york times kind of review in their mind and they might want to write 10 paragraphs or analyze the book you know um, using some high level literary analysis so just make sure you they know that you, you just want a line or two and since i started putting in the language like that like, you know, um, reviews are really important for independent authors. Uh, please consider leaving a review if you enjoyed the book. Um, just, a, just a line or two, and it would mean a lot to me. Something like that. And then I noticed, you know, a massive, massive uptick in the reviews. So just clickable link and just make sure you work on the language around that. Um, now, you'll be really surprised that how many reviews that will you know attract for you over time but again you have to be selling something for for this to work so you know i'll put a link in the comments to a monster post about all the different techniques that work right now to sell books so check that out but if you have all this architecture in place and then generate you know a a, a promotion for your books you will notice a massive improvement in the, in the amount of reviews that you get but of course that won't help you get reviews from day one um, you're throwing your book out there in the world and it has a lot of attention on it because, you know, especially if you're doing some kind of actual, you know, active marketing for the launch and has so much attention on it, but it doesn't have any reviews there at, the, at that time. And you're going to have a lot of eyeballs on your book during launch week, um, especially if you are actually are actively marketing the book. And it's a shame that, you know, you don't have reviews there to help, you know, readers close, help you help you close the sale with all those readers that are perusing your Amazon book page. So um, this whole topic is big enough that I'll do a separate video on it. But what you need to look into is the whole uh, topic of advanced reader copies or ARCs that I mentioned earlier. Now there's a variety of paid services that you can use, which are totally legitimate, like NetGalley and Booksprout. Um, but most authors actually just do this independently. They just you know, gather together a group of, of advanced reviewers and provide them with an advanced copy of the book before launch and so that they're ready to put their review on Amazon as soon as it goes live. But I'll dive into that whole topic separately because there's a lot to it. Um, but just remember to watch out for these myths around reviews. Um, make sure that you spend a bit of time on the language around the review request. And, and don't bother paying big books for, for you know, one of these editorial reviews. They do less for you than you think. And a lot of these companies just, you know, they don't deserve your money. Um, just ask readers instead. And um, that's it. Please don't forget to subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell as well. That part is important. And check out the description below for lots more uh, resources on this topic. Thank you very much.